I love using the MPC. I mean, you guys already know that. However, using the MPC software without an MPC in controller mode or a dedicated MPC controller absolutely sucks. Yeah, I said it. The piano roll is below average. I mean, look at this. Like, I can't delete something by using just a simple right click like every other DAW. I have to go and do erase, which makes sense to the MPC workflow. What doesn't make sense is when you slide over MIDI, it starts a new damn sequence. Why? No VST3 support still, and it's 2023. That means you can't load up the recent version of Contact without using complete control, which also doesn't work in the MPC software. Or loading any music theory plugins do not work like Scalar 2, for example. You are already seeing what I did with dragging over MIDI. Those are MIDI driven plugins. Using certain third party ASIO drivers crashes the MPC software. Observe. I had to restart my computer just to get access to my audio to finish this video. All of these things I have complained about for years, just not publicly. And I've addressed them in the official Akai forum for beta testers. And this is what they did to me. They suspended my account for inactivity when that is complete and utter bullshit. So what's the solution? ImageLine has updated FL Studio to 21.1 and you can use FL Studio like an external synth. By the way, this is not exclusive to just the current generation MPCs. This will work with any sampler or hardware synth. As long as it has a built-in sequencer and a MIDI in and MIDI out jack, you're good to go. All you need is one of the following three things. The first option is an audio interface that has a built-in MIDI in and MIDI out jack, like this one right here, which is the Universal Audio Volt 276. And the main reason why I recommend this is the audio quality. I'm a big Universal Audio fan. And then you'll be able to plug up your hardware synth or drum sampler groove box into it. And it has the MIDI in and MIDI out jacks. And all you have to do is just plug it up to your computer via USB-C to USB type A. But any other brand will do is this is my recommendation. If you don't feel like buying a new audio interface that has MIDI in and MIDI out, you can just add one to your computer using a MIDI USB host by Kenton. And I'll have that linked in the description box. It has a MIDI in and MIDI out jack on it. And you can also plug up stuff to it via USB that doesn't have MIDI in and MIDI out. This is a really good tool and it's pretty simple to use. Last but not least, you can use a MIDI controller. And this MIDI controller is the MPK MIDI Plus, which has MIDI in and MIDI out and a USB to type B to type A and plus some bells and whistles. It doesn't necessarily have to be this MIDI keyboard. The Cheerio Key Step is a healthy alternative that has MIDI in and MIDI out and then some just like the MPK Mini Plus. But if you have a MIDI keyboard that has a MIDI in and MIDI out jack, then you're good to go no matter what. The option I'm using in this video will be an audio interface. But if you have any questions on how to set it up with your studio equipment, well, leave a comment below. Please attach a super thanks of $10 or better, and I will reply and help you out the best way that I can. I will greatly appreciate it. The audio interface that I use in my office is the Acheria Audio Fuse Studio, which has MIDI in and MIDI out ports, and a special feature called Reamp, which is an auxiliary out, which will allow me to sample back into my MPC, and I will have my MPC plugged up via phono and line in. If I was to plug it up to one of the four channels in the front, I could use one of the four inserts to do a send and return with other existing hardware that I own. Now you guys can see why I'm excited about this update from ImageLine. And now let's talk about the setup. The first thing is pretty obvious. You need to install the recent version of FL Studio, which is FL Studio 21.1 or higher, just in case you see it in the future. I mean, that's obvious, right? The next thing is to go to your options, MIDI settings, and then access the external sync options, which you will select your MIDI in. My MIDI in is the Acheria MIDI in. 
Once you have selected that, you can go ahead and go to input if you want to send anything out from your audio interface or whatever, your MIDI controller, and you can go to enable. It's not necessary. However, what is necessary if you're using an audio interface is to go to the audio tab and select that driver. So the proper driver for me is a Cheerio Osio driver. After everything is done, I recommend closing this window and closing out FL Studio and restarting it. Now let's set up the hardware. Every hardware synth or sequencer is different, but on the MPC, all you will have to do is press menu, then go to your sync options and set it up to MIDI clock because we're sending clock out into FL Studio. The next thing you need to do on your current generation MPC or your hardware device of choice is go to preference and then go to your MIDI settings. On the MPC, I would recommend that you set it up to enable MIDI ports when discovered. Make sure that you set it up to the proper control mode output, which I will use MPC A, that port right here with this red MIDI cable. Then I will make sure that I can send clock and then I will hit this right here, which is a check sign that says send MMC. After that, you should be good to go. Everything is done. If you pay attention to the BPM on my MPC, it is at 72 BPM. The BPM in FL Studio is at 130. I already made a drum loop on the MPC, so when I press play start, the BPM should change inside of FL Studio because it is sending a PPQ, which is pulse per quarter note, to FL Studio. And as you can see, I have nothing but drums from my MPC. If I turn the MPC down, you hear nothing. But if I turn it up, then you can hear the drums on my MPC. And if you look at FL Studio, you see that the BPM is now at 72. Now here comes the interesting part. I just pulled up one of my favorite VST synths of all time, which is Electra 2. And what I will do is I will use some MIDI files and just drag it and drop it inside of FL Studio. However, since FL Studio is synced up to my MPC, I can just simply press play start and then I can turn up the drums and bruh, we are good to go. Remember when I said that the MPC software cannot use VST3 plugins? Well, FL Studio can. The recent version of the contact player does not work with the MPC software because it is in VST3 format. However, it works in FL Studio and you can sync your MPC to it. My point case in blank. Let's take it a step further than that. Let's just say you wanted to continue this process in FL Studio. Well, maybe you are one of these type guys, which is okay, I'm just joking. If you're anything like me, you like how the drums hit on an MPC. It is like none other. So what I'll do is go over here and then I will make sure that the mixer is right in front of you. And then I will go to access the audio in, the right audio input, which would be funnel five and six for me. It will be different for you. Make sure that it is on for record. It will have this red sign right here. Then I will go over here into the playlist. Make sure that I have the pattern one right there and then I will go into song mode and make sure that you have waiting on I know it's a, it's a lot at least the way I'm explaining it press the record button inside of FL studio then press overdub and play start on the MPC so that you get double the count and let's see the magic and your drums are recording in animation is actually pretty cool ah, FL and make sure after the recording process is done that you set everything back so you can hear the audio so just select none so if you want to play with the audio some more you can always double click on it and then you can do normalize or whatever you want to do to it and it's a little louder than I want it to be but yeah then you can add your pre-computed effects or whatever but the coolest shit is this so I have this progression right here, but I want to take this progression 
and sample it into the MPC. And all I simply have to do is this. Remember that reamp feature I was talking about on the Acheria Audio Fuse Studio? Well, I'm about to use it right now. On the current generation MPCs, there is a looper. So all I would have to do is just go into my menu and then select looper. And then I will set up my looper for a four bar loop. It's already set up that way. And the next thing I will do is select my inputs one and two. And you can see that it is hooked up to my inputs one and two on my MPC Live 2, which varies on individual MPCs, depending on which one you have. So from here, I could do a whole bunch of stuff, but the main thing I wanna do is sample what I have inside of FL Studio. I don't have to monitor in, you don't have to either. I'll have it off so that they won't have any loop feedback of any sort. So what I'll end up doing is just simply Pressing record on here, play start. Now I will mute everything, go on my MPC like I normally would, and then go to export, and then I'll play it back to see how it sounds. And then if I had to do any editing, I'll do that. And since everything is working now, I just normalized it. And what I'll do is just you know, normal, typical sample stuff. And here it is. And if I want to do some chopping, I'll just go in the chop and chop it up. Right of me, I have more content for that ass. Make sure that you subscribe. Are you digging the new FL Studio 21.1? Because I am, and I am happy that they implemented this feature because it was very, very necessary.